guys, today's fun little project is this dot painting. So if you've never used a dot or done a dot painting before, these are super awesome because you can use like anything that creates basically a dot and any types of paint. So I'm going to show you some different ways that you can do this and this is what we're going to create today. I hope you guys have fun. Let's get started. To get started today, you're going to need a little bit different materials than we normally use. You're going to need a piece of paper, just like always. If you have a little bit thicker piece of paper, almost more like a card stock, that's a little more ideal when you're using paint, okay, so that it doesn't bleed through and everything like that. You're also going to need some different paints. You can use two different types of paints, tempera or acrylic for this. Just remember that if you're using acrylic, be careful not to get it on your clothing as it can stain. If you do not have access to paints, you can also be super creative and you can use food. So you could use ketchup, you could use mustard, um, different condiments like that, different sauces. You can create your own paint out of food. So this is always an option if you do not have paints like this at home, that is how you can still create your artwork. <clears throat> And then, of course, you need something to create a dot. So I like using Q-tips because then I can just toss them in the trash afterwards. However, if you do not have any Q-tips laying around, you could also use a pencil eraser. So your pencil eraser works as your Q-tip point. You would dip it in the paint, and then you'd be able to paint that way. Just remember that you need to clean off your eraser between different projects, and that it may make your eraser not so great later on. So just keep that in mind that you might ruin the eraser doing this, but that is always an option um, if you do not have anything else. If you do want to just clean it with water at the end, then usually you're able to not completely ruin your, your um, eraser. So then it's just figuring out what you want to create. So I decided um, I was just going to be super cheery and think spring with mine. So I'm going to just make a rainbow. So, of course, like I said, you can choose any colors that you want to. You can do anything that you want to with this. But I thought a rainbow would be a fun, like, little cheerful way um, today. So I'm going to do a couple different rainbows on the paper. And I'm going to get started. So I'm just going to show you how to do a couple of these. And then I will fast forward the video through the rest of my design so that you're not sitting here like, why am I watching a bunch of knots? So all you do is you just dip in and you want to be kind of generous about the amount of paint that goes on it especially because q-tips are going to suck in a lot of that moisture so you might find the first couple times you dip in there um you're not going to have much paint on it okay so then all it is is you're just making a dot and you can make probably three to four to five dots before you need to dip in again and you'll see the different consistencies so all i'm doing is just dotting So I'm going to make a rainbow to start with. And you want to just make sure to leave little spaces in between because then it really creates that whole idea of the dot painting. Okay? So you can, of course, if you have Q-tips, you can just flip it over and use the other side and dip in your next color. The biggest thing that you're going to find with Q-tips is the longer you use them, the more flattened that they'll sometimes get. You'll also notice there's different sizes. If the, um, fu the cotton that's on the edge is a little bit more pulled apart, you're going to get bigger dots, kind of like my orange was. If it's a little more pushed together, you'll get smaller dots. And you can control that just by doing that yourself. So if you want them really tight, you just really push them in. And kind of if you spin it in your fingers, it'll tighten that cotton to the stick. If you don't want that, you can just kind of go back and forth both directions see how I'm just kind of wiggling it back and forth and then it gets all loose so that you get a more of a loose end to it and then of course like I said if you want to tie it again you just wrap roll it back in your fingers and it's pretty easy and it'll dry fairly quickly um if you're just using a little bit of paint we're not using too too much and then obviously with this, I like using paper plates because then it's easy clean up. I can just toss it in the trash afterwards. But of course, if you don't have a paper plate, what you can also do is you can take a regular plate, put a Ziploc bag or plastic wrap over top of it, and then put your paint on top so that it still feels like a palette. It's still sturdy like a palette. Um, but then you just pull the plastic bag off of the plate and you can toss it right in the trash. So again, these are all easy fix and solutions to some of um, the 
ideas or some of the things that you might not have available. So I try to make everything fairly available for you so that you can still do this at home. I don't think I'm going to fit both my blue and my purple, so I think I'm just going to go blue on this one. There. All right, so there is my first little... Um, rainbow that I have. Like I said, you of course can make anything that you want to. I'm going to just make a bunch of rainbow patterns and designs on mine because I think that's super fun. And then um, I will pop back at the end of the video. So I hope you guys are having fun with this one. Like I said, it's a little different, just changing it up a little. You of course could do flowers. You could do um, really anything during school. I like to do the animal ones. So we draw a little animal on the inside and then we go and dot all the way around the animal. So that is always an option as well. So just be creative with it and have fun. All right, we'll see you at the end of the video. So here's my fun little dot painting. I experimented a little. So I did a heart in the dot. This was supposed to be a flower and then I kind of messed it up. So I just made it a blob of dots. And then I have some of my fun rainbows. And then of course I made some fun little flowers. So now once this is dry, you could also go through and take like a Sharpie and add some details and do some designs as well. Or you can just leave it just like this. If you notice, it's really, really cool when you fill in the whole paper. The biggest thing when making the dot paintings is you always want to make sure that you're leaving those little spaces in between. So you don't want to overlap your dots. You just want to leave those spaces. That way it really creates that cool kind of dot idea. So it kind of looks like mosaic-y in a way. All right, well, I hope you guys had fun with this. I hope you get to experiment a little bit with your paint or your homemade paints. Um, and definitely make sure to share some pictures with the with me about these um, from this project because I really, really want to see these. These I'm super excited to see. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope it's nice and colorful like our picture. And enjoy the sunshine if it's sunny out today. All right, you guys. We'll see you in our next video.